Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. So first of all, we are going to learn about how to install and also interface our uh, ESP32. So this is our ESP32 board. It is a very cheap board. Uh, less than 30 ringgit you can buy. Betul tak? And then there are numbers of form factor. For example, the sizes. Uh, they also have something like this. This one is also equipped with the LiPo battery connector. Ni, LiPo battery connector ni for uh, interfacing with the external battery lah. Something like this. This is called LiPo battery. Okay. So you can plug in and then it can become a portable device. A very uh, convenient way to become a data logger. Okay. So first good eh. Right. So we also have the another form factor. So this is the example of the standard form factor under the Arduino punya design lah. So what we have here is basically a chip that been powered by the expressive name as the ESP32. So there are numbers of design under ESP32. For example, um, ESP32 C3, S2, S3 dan yang biasa anda pakai is ESP32 uh, ROM double ROM D. So I I got also another example. So this is much more smaller form factor. So this is from the Sit Studio. It is cost around less than 40 ringgit also lah. This one is, if I'm not mistaken, is 33 ringgit. 33 ringgit. This one is much more smaller. Uh, it also comprises of the ESP32 chip. But this one is based on the um, new model. ESP32 C3. Eh? <coughs> so, whatever yang anda ada ni adalah dipanggil sebagai microcontroller. Apa dia? MCU. In the short form, we call it as a MCU. So, we got another one. That you also uh, been taught before, which is we call it as the Raspberry Pi lah. Kalau anda pernah dengar saya cerita Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, betul? Uh, ini adalah contoh yang dipanggil sebagai uh, Raspberry Pi. So, it is uh, also known as the microprocessor ataupun dipanggil sebagai uh, microcomputer. Uh, ini contoh microcomputer. It's very small one. Okay, kecil ke besar ni? Uh, this is also uh, run the OS ataupun operating system. Uh, such as Linux and so on It is can run numbers of computational algorithm So apa beza ESP32 ni And then uh, the Raspberry Pi Who knows The first one is the size lah kan Beza sikit lagi Apa lagi Beza dia Yang ini ada OS eh OS maksudnya operating system so That means is uh, similarly like a computer Dia memang computer lah That run under the uh, they, they have the processor and so on uh, Based on the core This one is 500 megabyte. 500 megabyte um, RAM. Okay. So, ada tak awak punya RAM dekat dalam ESP32? The answer also is yes lah. Uh, ESP32 ni dia ada yang flash memory consists of uh, 4 megabyte lah as default. So, you got the 4 megabytes, you got the 16 and then uh, 32 if I'm not mistaken tak adalah. Dia 4, 8, 12 megabyte. So, how big is the 4 megabyte? Big enough lah eh, uh, for you to run the simple algorithm lah. Okay. This is Raspberry Pi. Jelas eh. Ada siapa nak pakai Raspberry Pi? This Raspberry Pi also can be connected to the internet via Wi-Fi and also the SSH. This one cost you less than 80 ringgit. If I'm not mistaken, it's 73 lah. 73 ringgit. And then you got the another one. We call it as the Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3, which is I do not have it here. Uh, but you can also purchase it elsewhere lah. The size also is smaller. Uh, about the credit card size lah. Ataupun anda punya bank card. Bank card apa? Bank card. Card bank lah. Okay, so we got the housing here. So the 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 beautiful part about the Raspberry Pi is you can also install it together with the camera. You can make it as a smart devices, uh, namely as a camera. So this is the Raspberry Pi camera. You can attach the camera and then it's become a smart devices lah to do the machine learning algorithm and something like that. Eh. Okay, ini tentang micro computer. Yang tadi saya cerita micro processor. Ah, ini also known as a micro processor. MPU, microprocessor unit eh. Yang ni dipanggil sebagai microcontroller. Apa dia? Ha, so nanti bila orang tanya, uh, apa benda yang you belajar ni? You belajar tentang MCU, microcontroller unit. Ha. What is the function? The function is to run a certain, certain logic and uh, to send the data over the internet because this is the ESP32 framework under the expressive punya uh, company. Saya rasa macam quite annoying lah. Awak tengok duplicate of myself. Eh, tapi memang anda nak tengok pun kan? Kalau takkan saya tutup kan? Ha -ha. Nak saya punya duplicate kat dalam ni. Okay. Habis tentang uh, MCU and also uh, other things. Okay. Ini LiPo battery. 
So what else that you need to know? Uh, next adalah OLED display. Saya tengok banyak yang ada display. Ini dipanggil OLED display. OLED is the organic uh, lighting emitting diode. It is cost you around uh, RM5, RM6, RM7, something like that. It's very cheap. And then you got also the LCD. So the difference about these two things, this one derive a lot of energy ataupun banyak power lah pakai current eh. Yang ini adalah much more smaller and then it's compact sizes. Okay, itu adalah OLED display. Next adalah sensor. Apa dia? Sensor. Some of you bought this one, DHT11. I already advise you, never buy this one. But if you buy it, never mind lah. You are going to suffer to get the uh, unreliable result. Because this is a very, 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 very old sensor. Apa dia? Old sensor. Ini dah more than 50 years, I think. Ini masa mula-mula dulu orang keluarkan temperature humidity sensor. They use this DHT11, DHT22 and also the other parts. Okay, this is also another type of sensor. Ini dipanggil infrared sensor. This is called transmitter and receiver. Ini IR lah. IR. IR stand for what? Infrared. Tu dapat tu. IR receiver. And then another one is IR transmitter. Okay, this one is transmitter. And then another one is the receiver. So, what is the function of this? Siapa tahu? Ni contoh, anda nak kawal TV kat rumah kan? Anda nak tukar channel. Tapi pakai phone je. So, you can connect to the uh, transmitter and also receiver. And then you set it up so that you can control it using your phone. When you press this button, then it will increase the volume, something like that. So, you can do that uh, in much more simplified manner. Okay, ini contoh kan? Anda punya infrared punya controller betul. So actually you can decode it. Decode ni maksudnya you can know once button is pressed what kind of the hexadecimal uh, coding are going to be appear. You read and then after that you can uh, encrypt lah. Encrypt those things and then you boleh buat you punya sensor sendiri. Okay I got the another one. This is the light dependent resistor or we call it as the LDR. Uh, siapa yang nak guna untuk ukur cahaya. So this is one of the older sensor also. It's very cheap and it's very easy to interface. However, I do not encourage you to use it because uh, it is not highly accurate lah for analytical purposes. Tapi kalau untuk belajar testing kejap lagi ni, siapa nak pinjam boleh pinjam lah. Ha, pinjam, kira ambil terus tau. Ambil terus bayar lah. Faham? Ha, harga sensor ni taklah mahal, taklah murah. Berapa harga dia? Sensor ni, yang depan ni saja sebenarnya. Yang very cheap one. This one is cost you around one ringgit untuk dapat lima ke enam pieces eh. Tapi when it come to the module, okay, this is called sensor module. When you see the sensor is also equipped with this body, and then you can find out the chip over there is uh, namely as a certain comparator chip. Uh, ini ada tulis LM19. If I'm not mistaken, you can see over there lah. Ada chip warna hitam tu kan, sebelah potentiometer. Nampak tak? Yang ni. Yang ni dipanggil potentiometer yang boleh pusing guna screwdriver tu untuk adjust manually. And then under there, we got the what we call it as the uh, comparator chip module. Uh, this one is called sensor module, sensor module. It's not the sensor. Sensor actually, the front part only is the sensor. Okay, when it's attached to something, it's called module. Okay, when you got chip also, they call module. So, this sensor module can cost you around a few ringgit lah. Macam ni tak silap saya, if I'm not mistaken, it's one ringgit and fifty cent. Very cheap lah. Eh, siapa nak boleh ambil. Okay, uh, this is sensor shield. Yang ni anda dah pernah guna dulu masa SM3. Alright, this is called jumper wire. This is called female to female jumper wire because they got both end uh, actually uh, position uh, they got hole lah dia ada lubang okey kemudian uh, we got also the another type of jumper wire we call it as the male to female female to male uh, kalau dia tajam macam gini uh, ini dipanggil male lah kalau dia tumpul atau sorry dia berlubang dia dipanggil female lah okey uh, saya tak tahulah kenapa dia guna istilah tu tapi faham faham sendirilah kan nak semagi senang orang faham hmm. alright finish about the jumper wire And then we got also another one. We call it as a breadboard. This is called solderless breadboard. Apa dia? Why they say solderless? Because it yeah. can be attached and also detached easily. So you can connect uh, multiple entries with regard to the use of this solderless breadboard. Okay, how to use it? Eh, uh, Each of the solderless breadboard, they got a lot of hole kan? Ada banyak lubang, betul tak? And then uh, this hole, for example, number 17 eh which is indicated into uh, this uh, green color ni hujung sekali ni saya letak sekarang okay uh, this is the example of how we want to interface something so let's say i want to connect this one all the row or all the hole here correspond to this um, column is actually connected eh ini bersambung eh ni this one so if i want to connect two wires for example i can connect something like this okay this is how i want to connect two wire okay 
So the wire here, the green wire is actually connected to another green wire based on that row, number 17. Faham eh? So if you want to extend, let's say I want to share the wire here, the current here, to another one also can. So now, the current is not only on the 17, but it's travel apart uh, and then jump into the another section, which is the number 7 lah. So now I connect it already, the uh, complete circuit of the wire. Nampak kan? Uh, so if I supply 5 volt from here, it can travel and then jump and then go to the blue color wire. So that is the function of your uh, solderless breadboard. To connect and make the non-permanent um, prototyping. So never use this one to the field. If you want to go to the field, make sure you solder it properly like this. Uh, you solder it properly. Otherwise, uh, you may uh, encounter a lot of problem lah in the future because the solderless breadboard is not intact. It is not um, sufficient to hold the the integrity of the connection. Lah. So make sure kalau anda gunakan uh, breadboard hanya untuk prototyping. That's when you want to test, you want to debug, uh, use this one. After you sure already how the connection is done, then you can pass through the puffboard. Uh, ini panggil puffboard lah. Okay, ataupun dipanggil PCB lah. Uh, so, you can uh, solder according to the connection. Okay, ni contoh ni kan nampak macam berselirat-berselirat ni. Uh, this is all the connection lah. It's all about connection. Connecting one wire to another wire. Okay, setakat ni ada body to buy numbers of, uh, we call it shield eh. So, the shield is quite useful especially if you want to interface it uh, in much more robust manner eh. So, anda tak perlu lagi nak me, me apa Anda tak perlu nak sambung kat solderless breadboard. In fact, you can just attach it to your shield. Siapa ada shield tadi? Minta tunjuk contoh kejap. Shield. Uh, EST32 shield. Yang ada banyak lubang-lubang tu. Mana? Ada tak contoh? Uh, ni this one. Siapa ada contoh? Tu yang awak pakai tu. Orang-orang pasang eh. Siapa punya yang tak pasang lagi? Whoever want to have it, you you can. Eh? Okay, so this is the what we call it as the ESP32 shield. The the use the usefulness of this thing is basically to extend the connectivity between the sensor and also the microcontroller. Let's say I want to attach this one uh, with the sensor, I can attach it directly. However, I want to utilize numbers of the pin, kan? So the pin tu mesti disambung kepada sensor shield like this, and then you can interface it. Uh, in a multiple manner eh. Contoh kan Anda ada 5 volt ah, Itu saya dah cerita kan Apa itu power dan juga um, IO I2C dan juga SPI Ingat lagi ha, Kalau tak ingat tak takpelah Sekejap lagi kita belajar Okay So let me just open this uh, thing Ada We call it as the ESP32 um, 30P expansion board So you can attach it like this eh. So how to attach it the USB cable here or the USB insertion must be similar uh, with their position. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the the interesting part about the expansion board, they got the barrel jack. This is called barrel jack 2.1 millimeter. So the reason of using this is to interface with the power supply. Let's say you got to attach this one uh, to your 240 um, power supply from the AC. Tahu AC kan? Electric apa? Alternating current. And then uh, you can supply it directly here. So, it can take up to 16 volt. Or you want to attach it directly to the external battery kan. Macam contoh nak pasang dekat battery kereta ke whatsoever. You can also attach it here. Or you can attach it together also with this one. Which is a micro USB. Or the uh, ES, uh, mic, uh, USB, USB type C. Okay. So, let me attach first. So, I already <coughs> attach the ESP32. Uh, ESP32. With the expansion board. It should be look like this. I, I believe that majority of you use this kind of thing. Ke tak? Siapa yang gunakan? Ke tak? Ha, tak. Kalau siapa yang tak gunakan, saya advise. I may advise you to use this one. This method. This way of connecting your um, microcontroller with your sensor. Okay. Selesai eh? So let us go into the much more uh, interesting part. Namely as a sensor interfacing. Eh? Okay. This is called a sensor also. Okay, ni contoh sensor. This is a simple sensor. Uh, we got the um, sensor that can detect the moisture, moisture level of the uh, soil. And then we got the comparator. Okay, ni panggil module lah. Why I said module? Because it's already attached uh, to the potentiometer and also the chip over there. Eh? The chip. 
ni panggil sensor untuk soil moisture. Okay, I just briefly give you an example lah apa sensor-sensor yang ada dekat dalam Arduino world. Eh. Okay, we got also the sound sensor. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this is based on the MAX 4466. It is for measuring the intensity of the peak uh, with regard to the adjustable gain. Ini, ini frequency level lah. Kalau anda berminat untuk ukur uh, bunyi bising, this is one of the option. But, this is not... Uh, It is not easy to program lah. Kalau anda nak yang senang program ataupun uh, very straightforward of the decibel meter, you can use the another one, which is the 9814 if I'm not mistaken, the number. Eh? So this is the sound uh, detector. Okay, this is called gas sensor. The gas sensor got four pin. Okay, kat belakang tu kalau anda ada gas sensor, ada tak semua ada gas sensor ni? Dia panggil flying fish, betul? Uh, this sensor is very cheap and widely used. Uh, internationally, nationally For detecting numbers of gas Especially with regard to the combustible gas LPG, LNG uh, All those gases That are easily to be detected And give warning And alarm system Are going to use this kind of sensor This sensor is quite cheap eh Only $1 each uh, RM4 je harga dia, betul tak? Uh, but it's uh, when it is being calibrated properly It can use Similar like the another commercial And highly expensive sensor And then it is uh, got four different connection. You can see over there, VCC, ground, DO and AO. When you saw anything with regard to the A, that's mean analog. D is stand for DG, digital. Eh? Okay, and then you got the potentiometer. So when you have the potentiometer like this, that's mean you can adjust. Apa dah? Adjust. Anda pernah adjust kan dulu, anda punya pump. Ingat tak masa kita belajar pump tu kan? Ha, they use the potentiometer actually to adjust the current supply to the Uh, motor of the pump That's why the pump can be Easily calibrated According to the uh, Flow rate that we need Okay Lagi What kind of sensor I have here I got uh, Multiple sensor Name as follows And all this sensor is available And if you want to buy one You can let me know eh? Oh nak macam Tukang jual lah ni Ni macam buat live lah kan Okay uh, Tapi ni eh. So kita sambung Kat sini kita ada multiple sensor And all this sensor If you uh, Saw it They comprises of the uh, Some of it Have the module And some of it uh, uh, in the form factor of module lah. Okay, yang ini adalah dipanggil sebagai, um, if I'm not mistaken, this one is AHT, AHT, um, okay, AGS-10. Okay, this one is capable of measuring the TVOC. Eh? Uh, ini AGS-10. And then they got uh, 4 pin. And then this 4 pin is actually correspond to the I2C. I2C adalah VCC, ground, SDA dengan SC, SCL. Eh? Okay, also, and then we have also this one, AHT and BMP. Uh, 280 They got two chip uh, Two sensor over there Yang ni Ini sensor pertama This is another sensor uh, Four pin also interface And then we got the another one This is for the light sensor uh, BH sensor You can see over there uh, BH Berapa tu? BH 1750 uh, So this one Is also capable of um, Interfacing with the I2C Okay Ini sensor lagi sensor apa lagi saya ada? Alright, so I have the another sensor which is quite advanced Namely as a particulate sensor Saya tak ada water sensor lah eh? Siapa yang buat water ni, saya minta maaf Water sensor ada tapi saya tak bawa uh, But it is quite um, sedikit mahal lah kan Mandi ni yang biasa-biasa Okay, so this is the particle sensor uh, Based on the plant tower design It's very easy to interface Just use the connector And then this connector is already being adjusted according to my need lah So, kalau siapa yang nak, uh, siapa yang tak ada particle sensor ni, tapi nak memilikinya, dan do not know how to interface with it, I can set it up for you lah. Okay. Uh, dia akan ada tiga wire je. You are going to install it only three wires. So, this is uh, quite reliable and accurate sensor because it's deliver the uh, laser. Dalam ni ada laser eh. Laser uh, scattering, light scattering imaging. Dia akan light scattered and then they will count. The numbers of the particle are going to be compare against the Um, a refraction uh, We call it as a refraction method Based on the MIE calculation lah Itu nanti anda nak tahu belajar lah Kemudian Very 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 advanced lah eh? Mathematical model Okay And then uh, we have also the another example Okay ni contoh example Yang ada tulis tak okay Kalau siapa nak yang ESP Nak bawa ke museum boleh lah Dapat kan eh? Dan dia dah rusak lah ni Okay And then we got the another one This one is also physically damaged Sebab dah tak ada pin lah Untuk uh, program Uh, but you still can program it using Arduino Uno actually. Okay, itu adalah dia punya introduction. Ada apa-apa soalan tak? So